And also on the sixth day, God created man. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. What a tremendous honor to be made in the likeness of God, to be a free-thinking, self-governing individual. In the beginning, man was not aware of his nakedness. This was likely because prior to sin, he was clothed with glory and light. God also created the ideal companion for Adam, his beautiful wife Eve. The joyful pair were placed in a magnificent garden, flawlessly designed to enhance their happiness. To Adam and Eve and the other creatures of the earth was also given the divine privilege of procreating in their own image. It was the intention of God that the human race would retain dominion over this perfect paradise forever. Eternally happy and healthy, they'd work with the flora of God's garden while enjoying the affection and companionship of all the creatures under their care. The environment our first parents experienced was vastly different from the world today. Roses had no thorns, insects did not bite or sting, and lions and lambs would gently frolic together. But the greatest blessing was that humans lived in perfect harmony with their maker. Every seventh day, Adam and Eve would rest from their pleasant labor and hold open blissful communion with their visiting Creator. It was a splendid, wonderful world, and this happy estate would have continued through eternity if only our first parents had proved faithful in one simple test. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Because the adversary had contaminated the universe with his rebellion, the Lord saw the need of a simple test of love and loyalty. Remember, the good angels had just seen a third of their friends cast out of heaven during the war. How could they be assured these new humans would not side with Lucifer and cause more trouble? So the Lord placed a unique tree in the Garden of Eden, a tree whose fruit was not to be eaten on pain of death. Passing this simple test of obedience would demonstrate Adam and Eve's allegiance to God and faith in His Word. Even more, it was a test of love. This is why Jesus said in John 14, If you love me, keep my commandments. But someone else learned of this test of faith and he determined to use it to his advantage. Satan was very jealous of the happy humans who were now enjoying the blessed life that he had lost. Their happy existence stood in stark contrast to his own, which was now full of guilt, sin, and misery. In his brooding resentment and anger, he was not content to leave the innocent pair alone, for sin always seeks to drag others down with it.
And so one day, as Eve was engaged in her pleasant work, she found herself alone and perilously close to the forbidden tree. It was then that Satan saw his opportunity. Using a mesmerizing serpent as his medium, the fallen angel called to Eve from the tree and thought to engage her in conversation. His charming words were carefully calculated to instill a distrust of God. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Tragically, as Eve listened to the smooth, silky voice of the tempter, she began to entertain doubts about God's word. The serpent enticed her with the promise of enhanced power and wisdom. She found this appealing. After all, the fruit had apparently given the snake the ability to speak. What other powers might it give her? And so even though she had just met the serpent, she trusted his word above God who had created her and provided her paradise home. So Eve ate the forbidden fruit and soon after persuaded her husband to do the same. Adam could have chosen to remain loyal to God, but he put his love for his wife above his love for God. As our first parents gave their allegiance to the enemy, the dominion of the earth was claimed by Satan. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey? No one can serve two masters. This world would now become the ultimate battlefield between good and evil, and the hearts of every man and woman the prize. Little did Adam and Eve realize it at the time, but their one moment of distrust and defiance would open the floodgates of suffering on millions of people for thousands of years. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Our first parents soon began to face the terrible results of their sin. In their holy state, Adam and Eve glowed with robes of glory. After they sinned, these natural robes of light faded, and they became mortified by a sense of their nakedness. Shame and fear replaced their joy and peace, and they sought to cover their nakedness with leaves. They now also found themselves under the constant influence of the devil. Giving in to temptation had weakened their very natures, and Satan had gained a new power over humanity. People could no longer resist the temptations of the devil in their own strength. Lastly, and most terrifying, they found themselves living under a looming death sentence. God had warned them that disobedience would bring death. They had already experienced the spiritual death. How long until they suffered physical death as well? At this point, their future held nothing but darkness and despair. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Just as sin caused the fallen angels to be expelled from their heavenly home, so now, because of disobedience, Adam and Eve were driven from their garden home in paradise. Everything around them was quickly changing, and humankind found itself susceptible to heartache, disease, and finally death. Even the animals and plants were infected by the terrible curse. Thorns and thistles now appeared on trees and flowers, and animals that had formerly been gentle began to kill and devour one another. The worst result was sin had separated humanity from God.